Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy, The Hunter Fisher. Welcome back to the Epi Banger video. And today, guys and girls, I'm going to tell you about what my favorite saltwater BFS slash finesse combo is going to be. Let's get right into it. Uh, I hope you uh, found that intro cool. I, I know I always like to make sure I have like a quick and to the point intro to begin my every one of my videos, but today's video, I actually had the random idea out for it on the water. I randomly decided this would be a great video to make because I honestly have received this question from a couple of people. Uh, one specific person in mind that I've actually kind of watched his channel some and after I answered his questions was Fishigan Milligan. He's a cool guy. He does some Texas saltwater flats fishing, which I do as well. So saltwater finesse is a big thing for kind of like our area that we both fish. So it's really cool to see someone who kind of does what I do also be getting interested in the techniques that I fish. So really what I mean when I say saltwater BFS slash finesse technique, uh, that means essentially using lures under a half ounce, probably even a half under a three eighths ounce, because that is what I consider finesse. As long as you're using weights in profiles that are smaller than four inches or three eighths, I would call that finesse in some ways. But more specifically, that's the American definition of finesse. What Japanese people in, or at least the JDM fishing culture, they call saltwater finesse light game. Light game is essentially using light lures to get the fish to bite more often in pressured spots. Light game includes Aji fishing and Mabaru. So those are two different types of fishing. I kind of talk about it in the video here, you're gonna see soon. These types of fishing are really awesome to watch and check out. So if you guys have any questions, shoot me a uh, comment down below and ask those questions down there. I can help you out with anything I know about those styles of fishing. But let's, without further ado, I'm gonna tell you guys what I think is gonna be the best combo. And by the way, guys, if you wanna go check it out, it's at bayfinesseempire.com as usual. Both of these products, except one of these products, is at uh, bayfinesseempire.com. All the lures I'll be using are from Bay Finesse Empire. Uh, I really appreciate everything that Amir, Amir, Amir does over there, so I really hope that you guys can go check them out. All right, guys, uh, we are on the water, and I just made the conscious decision of what this video is gonna be. I just thought about it while I was here on the water, and the, since the fishing's slow right now to start out, and there's nobody out here, I could just make the video right here. And if I sound muffled, it's because I'm blocking my face because of how crazy the amount of bugs are out here right now. But I want to give you guys a video on what my favorite saltwater finesse slash BFS combo is going to be. So if you guys don't already know, I love to fish with BFS. If you guys don't know what BFS is, it's essentially the bait caster system for using finesse gear. What that necessarily means is the fact that I'm using a bait caster for finesse fishing. I'm fishing with right now, I think like a three and a half gram lure, maybe even lighter. Uh, that means it's about an eighth or lighter, maybe an eighth or a sixteenth weight, closer to that range. Um, and that essentially means that I'm fishing extremely light. This is typical spinning gear type uh, lures. So, I mean, I'm doing something called light game. So if you guys don't know what light game is as well, light game is essentially uh, <laughs> saltwater light fishing. It's fishing with light gear and saltwater, even down to ultralight. And uh, it's something I love to do. Um, it's actually more of a Japanese technique. Um, I actually use lures like these. This right here is the Jackson Kwan uh, Athlete something. I can't remember. Athlete LL45, I think. I think it's Athlete LL45. If not, I'll have a correction on the screen. Don't worry. But essentially, <clears throat> essentially light game is fishing with light lures and salt water. I mean, that, there's a lot more specifics to it, but Americans uh, probably have dumbed it down a little bit more than what the Japanese have. And the Japanese, they kind of dumbed it down to more of a uh, two different types of fishing called Aji and Baru. Baru is like sea bass or rock bass, I guess. And then Aji is like mackerel type species, like your tiny horse mackerel and stuff like that. And what I'm using today is mainly just Mambaru lures. This is a Mambaru tune athlete uh, bait. So it's gonna be more larger in size and more of a reaction style bait. I'm actually gonna fish it a few different ways today. Um, pop it like a pencil. And I'm also going to just straight reel it, but you have to straight reel it extremely slow. But that's enough about the lures that I'm using. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because I'll have a lot of people asking me, what do I recommend for using in salt water for BFS? Well, this is the exact combo I'd recommend more than any other combo I think I've ever used because this combo is just so much fun 
and it honestly does everything that I could possibly need it to do. And if you're somebody who's up north and you're looking for a combo that could do bass, uh, bass finesse for you, and also take it on a trip down south to do some saltwater finesse, that is exactly what I would say you could do with this combo. So that's enough about talking about what you can do, all that stuff with this combo. I'm gonna tell you what the combo is. So to begin with, the rod is called the Huerco uh, 700 MG. The rod is the Huerco 700 MG, and essentially this rod is, it stands for micro game, but what's unique about this rod is it's a five piece. So it breaks down to this handle segment, that's as long as it gets right there, packs down, it fits in that bag I have over there, it's awesome. I love it because I went actually on a South Florida trip and I used this combo down there, but I was able to pack it in my backpack and take up less room in my truck when I went down there. Obviously I brought other combos as well that <laughs> didn't fit as well as this one did, but man, I wish I had a lot more combos that were shaped like this because it's a lot more convenient to fish with something that's travel oriented versus a big seven footer one piece and it's harder to get hold of it. But this rod is actually rated for two to 10 grams, I think. Yeah, two to 10 grams with an 0.8 pe max so 2 to 10 grams if you don't know grams to ounces that's roughly about uh i want to say around the 112 ish range i want to say i don't know correct me if i'm wrong i'll have the thing on screen for it but two grams is like i don't know the range exactly right now i'm getting smothered in mosquitoes so i'm sorry i'm walking away oh this is killing me but uh this rod and the, what the 0.8 pe means is essentially like your max 12 pound test line which that means in japan the max breakage is 12 pound it doesn't mean the average breakage like americans do what americans do is usually pretty wrong uh so i would say this is more of like a six to ten pound line rod and that's the max i would ever recommend going on this rod because of the fact it's just that would overpower it and i use only pe on this combo the reason why you want to do that is because it allows you to get further cast and more line capacity with this reel so you don't have to worry about you know getting spooled or anything because that's the thing with salt water and bfs fishing is a danger you're going to run into is running out of line now now i've said about what i've said about the rod this is a five piece rod packs up really fine and it's a fast action so we're it kind of leans to the moderate moderate fast action i mean i mean not the moderate moderate fast action it leans more to the fast uh moderate fast action and honestly it's very nice because i'm able to essentially throw any lure i want on it so the lure i'm throwing today is that athlete i showed off earlier but i've thrown ned rigs on this rod i've thrown jig head baits on this rod and i can't really find a lure that does not work on this rod so i'm really excited to use this rod further i've always loved using it but we're actually going to try out something else since we're here just so i can show you guys on video how good it is all right guys the lure we're about to try is the sura noia m17 spoon now if you guys know anything about spoons is they're very easy to cast so they're a lot of fun to fish with but this is actually a two and a half gram spoon so this is actually, I believe, a Mambaru spoon, which means it's also for sea bass. Like I said earlier, the casting is awesome on this. So obviously the casting is not going to prove anything as far as why you should fish with this combo. I just love to fish with these types of lures. So I have a swivel on here to keep a uh, line twist from happening. Not that you really have to worry about it much, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to fish with this. Oh, I just got hit. Dang, nice. Um, but essentially this is a pink spoon. It's a great little spoon, but this rod can also handle the spoons as well as the uh, jig heads and the treble hook baits. So it's a, it's a very unique rod in the fact that it can do a lot of things well. It doesn't do everything perfectly, and, but you really don't need to do everything perfectly if you're looking for a travel rod. This rod can do everything that you would want to do for bass and light game. I've made plenty of reviews on this rod now, so let me explain further about the reel. So if you guys... <laughs> don't know what this reel is i'm surprised uh, because it's probably one of the most talked about reels in bfs right now uh next to the aldebaran uh this is the daiwa gekka vision uh air twpe edition edition so this is a special reel meant for jigging in salt water this is uh, essentially meant for those guys who are fishing the tidal pools out of japan at night because gekka vision means queen of the night i believe is what it means <laughs> um and essentially this reel was meant to cast like two gram lures very efficiently and that's exactly what I'm using right now. And it's meant to essentially slow roll jigs through puddles, essentially, is what it's like meant to do. Golly, guys, this, these mosquitoes are next level bad. <laughs> I might have to call it early today. <laughs> it makes me feel bad because I might not even catch a fish. This reel has very been, it's been one of my favorite reels. I, this, between this reel and the Calcutta Conquest right now, it is a hard matchup because 
I don't know which one I love more. If you were to ask me straight up, like without, without, you know, worry about, you know, style. If, if you were to tell me which reel looks better, if you were to ask me which reel looks better, I would probably still be stuck between the two. But I would say in terms of performance, the most consistent, the most accurate, the most long casting reel overall is gotta be the Gekka Vision. For all the reels that I own, which I'm gonna do a, a rod and reel arsenal again here soon for 2023, but out of all the rods and reels that I own, this is by far most fun reel to fish with because it does so much. And people have fished for trout with this reel. You can get replacement spools for this reel to be doing very good in. But this reel just is one of the most general purpose reels you will ever find in the BFS community right now. The BFS niche is very wide and there's a lot of different reels you can use. Like there's the Airstream Custom, that's more of a freshwater reel. It's actually a freshwater only reel, so do not get that reel if you want to dry salt water. But I fish brackish, so I wouldn't even use it here, but I don't have it. Uh, point is, but this reel is easily the best saltwater fishing reel if you're looking for a reel. The capacity is, it does leave some to be desired. I have probably about 60 yards on right now. Uh, to be honest, I have not ever had a fish take more than half a spool from me on six pound braid. So I'm not really too worried about it because I have yet to run into a fish that can best me that way. So if you guys struggle with that, maybe don't check out BFS. <laughs> but I doubt that's gonna be an issue because I fight 30 inch redfish and I've never had an issue, just to give you an idea. And the casting is amazing. I usually keep on the same break setting, which is around six. Uh, sometimes I go lower if I'm fishing for crappie with this reel. I've had it down to three before with a 1 16th ounce chatterbait and it was pretty great for the fishing wise. So it did do that as much as I wanted to. So like I said, guys, there's actually replacement spools. So say for example, you get this combo and you use it for just a saltwater trip. Well, you can go buy another spool and you can have a trout fishing reel. There's guys in Australia, if you guys wanna know a great channel uh, for BFS fishing that I love to watch personally that a lot of people don't know about, it would be OCD Fishing Aus. Uh, he's an Australian guy who uh, fishes saltwater. God, look at these bugs. <laughs> He fishes saltwater, he fishes uh, trout, he fishes everything, and he's a phenomenal fisherman. I love his videos because they're very chill, and he, he kind of puts out a message that I really support. Uh, he's Christian, and I really appreciate that in today's society. It's just you don't really see people with a purpose anymore. So his channel is really awesome. I just want to give him a quick shout out because he's a very cool guy. I've talked to him in his comment section before. He probably doesn't even know who I am. <laughs> But the point is, I give him a shout out because I like him. I'll leave his channel down below just because he's put out a great review and showed how this reel can do absolutely the most possible. It's just a fantastic reel. I'm actually going to put out a year, a year later view, I think, here in the future now that I think about it. And I think I'm really going to break down what I think about this reel versus other reels in the market right now. I do want to say one more thing about this reel too, is the fact that this reel is a lot more restrictive than say the current Shimano offerings. So the braking system is going to be a stronger braking system. The zero on this reel is not going to be absolute zero like other Shimano reels. What I mean when I say that is uh, the Shimano Aldebaran right now and the Shel Shimano Calcutta that will be coming out right now, those reels will have absolute zero magnet. They will have the ability to go down to absolutely no braking power at all. Personally speaking, I think that it's risky. If you plan on using your reel for ice fishing, cool but I doubt there's someone who can control a reel perfectly at zero braking. Uh, just cause, I mean, when I say perfectly, I mean, you made 100 out of 100 casts perfect every single day in a row for like three months. Like, <laughs> there's no one that good. And unfortunately, even the pros aren't that good. The, the Shimano braking system is a lot more looser is what I would say, because yeah, it's it does cast further at times, but it gives you, it, it relies more on you versus the uh, braking system. So it's a, it's a more, I would say, enthusiast oriented reel. And what that means is essentially, you've got to have a lot of experience with BFS reels to get into the Shimano game versus the Daiwa. So Daiwa's, I would say, are the better starter choice because they are just more efficient. You don't waste time backlashing. You don't waste time doing all that junk. So that's why I love this reel versus other reels in the market currently, just because I don't have to worry about backlashes as often as other people do. And as often as I do with my Shimano option. <sighs> Guys, I'm just talking talking because right now, what the heck was that sound? Oh, because right now um, <laughs> the fishing sucks because it's just so hit or miss. I wish I had shrimp right now, but I'm also not uh, because <laughs> I don't like using live bait most of the time. 
so I don't feel bad about not using shrimp. So, but we're probably about to switch up baits again just to see what else we got in the bag to try. Because heck, why not? <laughs> These bugs are also like next level bad guys. I have to like take breaks and walk away for a second because of how bad these bugs are. Let's try a different lure guys. So this lure was a CDM lure uh, is what the terms would probably be. I know a lot of people say Japanese domestic market for cars and stuff. Well, it also applies to um, lures and fishing gear, which sorry guys, I use three snaps <laughs> on this lure. I know I get some hate for that, but to be honest, I don't care. It catches fish anyways, and I don't feel like switching lures and tying up leaders and leaders and leaders and leaders when one leader is just fine. I save money. Other people don't. It's not my problem. <laughs> but we are going to try a Japanese lure again. This is going to be the Jackson Chinu Coroli. So this lure right here, guys, is the Jackson Chinu Coroli. Uh, this is kind of meant to be a bottom hopping jig. It's, you're just meant to essentially just hop it off the bottom and... It's pretty fun to use. It's a five gram lure, so it's a little heavier than the lure I was just using. So we're actually gonna turn up our brakes a couple of notches, just cause why not? Oh my gosh, these bugs, guys. Maybe it's because it's slower water, they want their own bottom, who freaking knows? But there's tons of mullet. So I'm thinking maybe they're here, maybe they're not. We're gonna find out. All right, guys, we're using the Gant Jesus. Holy mullet. That just scared the crap out of me. What we're using today now is the Gancraft Joiny Claw 70. It's a pretty good looking one. This is actually the saltwater one. So it's interesting. I'm interested to see what what. I've been trying this lure like crazy, but I have yet to actually get a hookup on it. I know tons of people have had luck on this thing, but I haven't yet. So I'm just gonna fish it slow and just see what happens. And just give it a pop every now and then. All right, guys, we switched it up to a Surinoya Century. We're going to see how this does. I've tried this a few times. I forgot how much it weighs. It's like four grams, I think. It's essentially a minnow prop bait. It has a spinner on the back and uh, has a bill. You straight crank it, I believe. A lot of light game oriented stuff. Get some good casting distance on it. That's good. All right, guys, that's it for the rest of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was kind of just me talking out in the water to my GoPro saying, I like this, I like that, but I genuinely do love this combo. I've talked about this rod a ton on the channel. It's casted anywhere easily within the one and a half to 10 gram range. Uh, I've casted one sixteenth ounce jigs, but mainly my favorite things to throw on this rod are gonna be that two to six slash seven gram range, uh, mainly because it just loads up very well and it keeps most of my fish pinned. And the components that were used to build this rod are very high quality so this combo isn't a cheap one but it's also very much worth it so if you're wanting a combo that can literally go from up north to down south no problem this is probably that combo because I could see this being a great smallmouth rod but I could also tell you it's a great redfish rod for finesse as well I've used it to catch I've hooked into snook I've hooked into jack creval I've hooked into a lot of different fish and I've caught a lot of different fish as well so I do highly recommend this rod if you're looking to get into saltwater finesse slash BF whatever you want to call it but I know this combo really does it for me Ned rigs anything you name it minnows uh, cranks top waters all of it if you're looking for a rod that really does it all I would say the Huerco 700 mg five piece is definitely the one to do it and if you haven't already heard of the Daiwa Gagavision air TW PE special it is a great reel I've used it many a times I had an original unboxing video but I unfortunately had to delete it because of uh, some former relations with uh, certain companies uh, that I I'm not going to talk on that as much as I want to. It's a great reel, great rod. And if you guys want to go check out any of my other content down below, just hit my channel icon. Go scroll through and check out what else I got because if you like this video, I have plenty more awesome information that you can get a load of here soon. I'm going to be doing a lot more gear reviews here soon. Uh, the same format that I did this video. Sitting here in this room, talking intro, outro, whatever you want to call it, but I'm also going to do gear reviews. Um, I might do a gear review on the old Calcutta Conquest BFS right here. It's a great little reel, but to be honest, with the uh, the 23 coming out now, it's kind of not 
necessary to do the review on it. Um, I do have another review coming out on a very special reel. Besides this is a Shimano. I'm going to be reviewing the SLX BFS very soon here because I actually have just got it in from Digitalk. I just haven't gotten the chance to take it out because to be honest, I took a break from fishing for about a couple of weeks because it sucks. It really sucks right now. My spots got Im like immensely hammered, which by the way, guys, if you're fishing any of the spots for my videos, please pay attention to local regulations. Uh, genuinely speaking, I know people go and fish my spots. I'm not stupid. And I also know the people who were watching my channel ha who are out of this spot usually have watched my channel because they've told me on multiple occasions now. Uh, so I, I appreciate the viewership, but I'm going to tell you if I see someone else again out there keeping double their limit on redfish and trout, I'm going to call up FWC again without a, without hesitation because I've already called FWC on a family, on a four person family who kept almost 40 trout alone, not to mention underslot redfish, two of each. So that's eight redfish that are not even 18 inches. I was watching it get measured. It was measured with a cooler and those aren't accurate. Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm just being a Darren slash Karen or whatever, but I'm the first to call FWC because I don't play around, especially when you're representing my channel. I don't play around with regulations, period. That's just how it's going to be. Besides the point, we're going to be doing a lot more reviews here soon. I'm going to be doing a lot more saltwater fishing soon. Fishing's supposed to turn around here soon. I don't know that for sure yet or not, but I'm really hoping it does because saltwater, fresh water, no matter what it is, it sucked for me. It's really sucked for me. And I fish like mainly finesse. Like what's, the, how does that make sense? So yeah, we're going to get out and do it. I'm actually going to be trying different ways to fish here soon. I'm going to try in some cat fishing. I'm going to be trying some big bait fishing just because it's fun. It's fun. I'm just fishing to have fun guys. So I hope you guys are along for the ride. I hope you guys are looking towards new videos to come out on the channel soon. You'll see an SLX BFS review. You might see a Calcutta Conquest 7, 2017 model review. Uh, no promises on that. You will be seeing a different bunch of different rod reviews, stuff like that to come in the future. So I want to say thank you guys again for watching. And as always, folks, please remember, because this is the most important part of every single video, fish fear me.